Hi everyone, welcome back to Novel Nomad and welcome to what is uh, my Adelaide Writers Week 2024 wrap up. So I did do a video beforehand of what I wanted to read, but I changed my mind. I didn't want to post that one because it kept changing um, and there were so many different avenues that I wanted to read and wanted to explore. So it wasn't truly honest to my reading experience for Adelaide Writers Week. But I really wanted to share with you the books that I did read and the ones that I purchased as part of Adelaide Writers Week because it is the time of year that I allowed myself free reign to buy any of the books that fascinated me because um, I am trying to read my own shelf so I, I didn't want to add too many but I, I slightly did. <laughs> but anyway, um, let's get into the books that I did read in the lead up to Adelaide Writers Week. So it was very poetry heavy this year and I am still reading The Lost Arabs by Omar Sakir. It's just an absolutely amazing poetry collection by an, uh, a guy, uh, Omar is from West Sydney. He writes really brutally honest poetry that makes you really feel you know, visceral in within your body and within his body. Um, and he's also writing from a um, queer Arab background viewpoint and it's just it's just beautiful so I highly recommend then we've got Ellen Van Neven's comfort food I've read her other one which is throat which is here so I've read throat and loved it but I haven't read comfort food so that was amazing to read I reread uh, Curly Saunders um, kindred which is just such a, a moving collection of poetry and also jazz Moni and Abby Colby Eckerman. So I, I reread these three and I read Comfort Food for the first time. So these are all Indigenous women who write absolutely stunning poetry of place, of feeling, of self, of loss, of isolation, of colonial um, bodies. Um, it's just, it's just beautiful. So I definitely recommend um, any of these poetry collections. Um, but yeah, so those are the ones I reread and just adored reading in the lead up to Writer's Week. It just got me so centrally focused into this beautiful space. Um, but a big one that I read, I didn't reread Mary Beard's Women in Power, but I did read SPQR because Mary Beard, the classicist from England, was coming over to Australia it was going to be amazing. I was so excited. And so I read SPQR. I know her latest one is I like Empress of Rome, but I have SPQR on my shelves. I never read it before now. And it was amazing. It was honestly just the most accessible way to really read it into the Roman Empire. And we're talking about the creation of the Roman Empire. So, and it's very Rome centric. SPQR is the people of Rome. And so it's kind of looking about how Rome was developed, how Rome became like this place of kings, and then how Rome became this place of Senate before it was empire. And then how basically this democratic Senate elected place became empire and created the Caesars. It was just such a fascinating development. So yeah, if you are currently going through a Roman Empire phase, uh, as we all know, um, it's really, really good. I highly recommend. Also, her other ones sound amazing. And she's done a few TV series if, you know, more um, docos are more your thing when it comes to history. But yeah, Mary Beard was amazing to see. And it was just amazing to like watch this before Oh, sorry, it was amazing to read this before I got to see her um, in conversation. So yeah, this was really, really fun. Secondly, it's it was International Women's Day yesterday and I recommend reading Women in Power by Mary Beard, mainly because it talks about how women's place in society and structures and how this kind of dominance of Western cultural ideas and beliefs, especially within the classical Roman periods, where that kind of originated from and where they keep drawing back to and how many of the historians technically had it wrong. Um, so yeah, it's really, really fascinating. I do recommend, I've got this lovely silver gold version. I think the new one has like foiled blue on the cover with the paperback. So it's very pretty. And it's such a small little fun read. If you wanted to read some history, women's history and women's power and place in history as well. 
Okay, so let's get on to the fun part of the thing. Oh, no, no, it's all fun. But let's get on to the part where these are the books that I bought during Writers Week. And we're going to get straight in. I bought a lot of poetry. Let's just put that out there right now. Poetry and nonfiction was the, uh, the go <laughs> for this Writers Week. And the first one that I picked up was A Line in the Sand. This is actually by his 20 Years of Red Room Poetry. And it's got the all these amazing people have contributed to it it's got uncle archie roach abby colby eckerman jazz mooney bruce pascal tony birch eloise grills grace tame maxine benneber clark dorothy porter omar musa um sarah holland blatt it's all these amazing poets and writers and thinkers in australia or writing about more global topics and this is a collection compiled of all their different works together so you can get like a taster of all of them um this is awesome i didn't know this existed but yeah this one is really exciting so if you want to get a taster into some of this amazing literary poetry scene that's happening in australia this is probably a perfect place to start my very very first session for writers week hilariously was to see nam lee who is a um an Australian poet um, with Vietnamese parents. So it's his 36 ways of writing a Vietnamese poem is his po latest po poetry collection. So he wrote The Boat, which is about boat people. If you know anything about Australian history, it's about boat people. But yeah, so his session was phenomenal and I had to go buy the poetry collection and I got it signed because he was just lovely. Um, and it was just really, really interesting to listen to the way he views poetry, he thinks about poetry, he thinks about creation and how he views his work in collaboration with other works and also Vietnamese works and, you know, that distance he has from Vietnamese because he's not a fluent speaker kind of thing. Um, he doesn't, well, he doesn't read um, Vietnamese poetry. So it's just an interesting aspect to view that from um and yeah so that was such a great session i do recommend they do release podcasts of all the adelaide writers week sessions so if you're ever interested in checking out any of the people that i talk about today soon in a few months time i think they're going to do it really fast this year but in like a few weeks to a few months time there should be adelaide writers week podcast come out where they have all the video record well, voice recordings of all the different sessions and you can actually listen to these conversations which is pretty cool um, but yeah, he was amazing and shout out to the guy who I only got to say hi to really briefly in the signing queue who recognized me. You are lovely. <laughs> I didn't really get to say hi um, because I, I was next up in line. Um, but yeah, it was such a great session. I highly recommend. Okay, so the next two were a bit more of a fun session later in the week and that was Birds with Personality. And these were two bird enthusiasts, psychologists. Oh, I don't know what the actual birdology word is. Um, but yeah, so they they were promoting it for people, bird lovers and twitchers as bird, um, you know, bird watchers and things like that. Um, but Daryl Jones, he's written quite a few books and it's more like feeding birds at my table, uh, understanding backyard neighborhood birds that you would see. So he's done a field guide for not going out into like deep Australian bush to find birds, but like birds you'll see just flying around your neighborhood and or the ones you should be seeing. Um, so he did a field guide for that, but um, Carelew's um, on Vulture Street is more of his uh, memoir and like history of, you know, the, his love and fascination of birds. And so it's also a very urban focus of birds because there's 34 species of birds that are urbanized um, around Australia. Um, and you can find them from the tropics of Darwin down to the very cold, chilly Hobart down in the south. So yeah, so he's really fascinating and this was his selection. He has a few books, but I selected this one. Um, and also the other one was Georgie A um, Angus and she is an artist and she illustrates birds. Um, and so her collection, she had three books and um, it was really lovely to see. So she's done, it's almost like a field guide. She wanted to keep it interesting, um, but also something unique to the birds. Uh, so yeah, so birds of paradise so this is birds with personality and it's 50 of the world's most sorry 50 of the world's most beguiling birds um that she's selected and illustrated she's also done 100 australian birds and she's done 100 australian bugs beetles and insects as well um but she, they were really fascinating they didn't actually have a moderator they just chatted to each other about things and the questions 
for this session were hilarious because people were just asking, it's like, I see this bird, what should I do? Um, questions, it's, uh, it was just so much fun. Next up, I purchased The Rocks Remain, which is black poetry and story. And this is published by a local South Australian publisher called Wakefield Press. Um, and this is an anthology um, created, well, edited by Karen Wilde and Dominic Guerra. Um, so this one is, I, I haven't heard too much about it. I saw it come out, so just look at that cover. But it's, I think it's 25 Indigenous writers share their, their stories and the stories that they really want to connect with country and the ones that they really want to share. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to read this collection. I didn't get to, to the session that was like um, celebrating the release of this um, publication. Uh, just timing did not work out for me. I couldn't get in the city that early. Um, but yeah, I really would love to listen to the podcast for this one, but I knew I wanted to pick it up. So I'll definitely put this on my poetry collection to start reading. Um, if you don't know, I read poetry on the tram. I started that last year. So every time I go in and from work, which is about a 30 minute trip, one way, <laughs> so it's about an hour, um, I put on quiet, relaxing music and read poetry in the morning. And I find it's very, very nice way to de-stress. Um, okay, so next is Kate Morton. Yes, the lovely Kate Morton made an appearance. I didn't realize that she's now living in the Adelaide Hills. But yeah, so she made an appearance and I picked up her co a copy of The Distant Hours. It's a very beautiful, beautiful cover. If you can see it, it's quite dark and I'm in a fairly dim room because it's a little bit warm today. <laughs> Just just a tad. Um, but yeah, I picked up uh, The Distant Hours because one of my very good friends who goes to Writers Week uh, adores Kate Morton and this is her absolute favourite. So it's all a bit gothic, a bit um, family secrets and dual timelines and things like that. So I'm very, very keen to um, pick up this one. And uh, next, another fiction. I know, I know I said I didn't have too many fiction, but this one is Hollow Pox by Jessica Townsend. Now, um, I think I think it got a worldwide release. Nevermore got a worldwide release. And then you have the second one, which I'm going to forget the name of, uh, Wonder Smith, and then Hollow Pox is book three. Hilariously, I only had the advanced reading copy of book three. I loved it, um, but I never purchased the actual book. And I've got books one and two signed and I was planning to get this one signed, but I was very much outpaced by all the very enthusiastic fans, uh, probably aged under the age of 20. And uh, they ran, they ran to the signing table. I just stood back. I'm like, it's not my day. I'm not running. I'm not going to push out the way. They are so keen to meet her and talk to her and everything. It was so sweet. Um, so yeah, so I did get the book for myself, the actual final copy. I feel like rereading it, but she made a very nice announcement that book four is actually coming out this year. So yeah, I think a reread is in order um, and I get to christen this book um, before the th fourth book comes out. Okay, so we have two more pieces of fiction before we go back into poetry. And the first is a very old book it's not the latest from charlotte wood but charlotte wood submerged cathedral this is an absolute joy and favorite of the booksellers at matilda's which is up in the adelaide hills um it's a beautiful bookstore so if you're ever down in adelaide adelaide hills way matilda's perfect but yeah so this one is it's a really fascinating um blend of lives coming together and the dualities of Australia with a European sense and Australian sense and indigenous sense and all those dualities that kind of merge together but also this happening in another factor like a duality of it being in a relationship happening having those kind of same dualities playing out so yeah so submerged cathedral so it's a very shiny cover um but yeah so it's going to be an interesting one I think it's fascinated me for a little while, so I think it, I finally decided to pick it up while it was there. It's usually quite far back on the back list, and it's not an easy one to get, so I picked it up. And secondly is Boy Parts by Eliza Clark. Uh, and Eliza Clark is a lovely person, but unfortunately they just had a very terrible moderator um, for her session. Um, it was very awkward, and um, you know she writes very fascinating interesting female characters almost grotesque 
kind of really exploring like a duality of femininity in modern times. Um, and the author, uh, sorry, the moderator almost was ridiculing her for that. She was coming from a very like, I'm 70 something and I believe we should all have the morality of, you know, Elizabeth Gaskell. And I'm like, um, okay, so as much as I love Mrs. Gaskell, uh, it's not what we're here for. And it just felt very, very weird. Um, but yeah, so I'm very interested in reading boy parts. I started it, I got a copy from the library, but it was very, I was trying to get through SPQR by Mary Beard in all honesty, and I just did not have time. So yeah, I, I went straight in for boy parts to get a copy and she signed it and she was really lovely to chat to. Okay, poetry, I only have a few books left so let's get straight into it um first off we've got uh the flirtation of girls by sarah m Soleil, and um she was absolutely stunning to listen to if you want to listen to her um talk it was just beautiful um and she's a i think a lebanese egyptian and palestinian writer and how she kind of has to really go through all of the because she grew up until I think the age of like nine ten in Australia and then they moved to the US and how you know kind of facing that um constant battle of you know a western ideal in the 90s of what people were supposed to be and she was constantly commenting on like she didn't look like the classic um young girls that she was surrounded with and her like trauma of growing up with that so yeah so it's kind of she's come back to herself and come back to her identity and really carved her own place um so yeah so this is her poetry collection it sounded really fun um she's also written a fiction book um which i didn't pick up because i'm i'm deep in a poetry space right now so i went straight for the poetry collection and uh, next is um Kiralee saunders bindi which is actually is one lots of awards and it's got this beautiful black cockatoo wing on it but um it's it's actually a collection for kids but I was chatting to Caroline she's like oh so many adults buy Bindi because they just get so fascinated by it and and we we're talking about how children's fiction isn't really specifically for children if it's a good story it can be read by anyone um so yeah so that's why Bindi's really popular so if it's a really interesting narrative um, poetry that you're after that you can read with your kids. Bindi is probably a great place to start. So yeah, Bindi by Kiralee Saunders. Um, they had a beautiful, I think the other um, larger edition had like this beautiful black cockatoo on the cover, but yeah, this one's just as beautiful. So it was great to chat to her as well. Um, then we've got two from Omar Sakia. Again, his uh, latest poetry collection, Non-Essential Work, which kind of reflects on being a poet during COVID, um, because obviously in Australia, we use the term essential workers and they're all people on the front line. Um, and then you had non-essential workers like poets and how he had to deal with this constant idea that poetry was non-essential um, when art and, you know, art and all these all these elements of society, human society were so vitally important for people when they were being isolated and locked down so it's it's a play on like the idea that it's considered non-essential but it is actually vitally important and then his first collection which i've never heard of which is called these wild houses um it's i'm not sure if you can see that too well it's got a hoodie on the front um but yeah this was his first collection which was only published in 2017 which is nuts because he's done like uh, this would be his third poetry collection and also um, a fiction book since then. So yeah, so it's just amazing to see how prolific these writers are. And lastly, I've got Amina Kandasami, um, Tomorrow Someone Will Arrest You. This one I picked up on the recommendation of a friend. She was very fascinated by it. Um, so it's kind of like a riot, you know, protest piece. Of femininity and it just sounds really really wonderful I think as well is kind of like questioning desire female desire um, so yeah I always love finding these random poetry collections in the book tent because um, it's just so much fun um, and I did have a lot of fun it was a really beautiful time um, to explore writer's week and actually explore this poetry it did get a bit hot towards the end I must admit I did get sunburnt um, I wasn't unfortunately it was incredibly 
busy. If you see any of the pictures around Writers Week, it was a really busy season this year, um, which was a bit nuts because usually you can get a seat in the shade uh, midweek, but no, not this year, definitely not. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I am going to head off and start reading some more poetry. It's a long weekend here and I'm just going to savour and enjoy it. But if you are interested in any of these authors, let me know. I'd love to have a chat to you about it because they're new, they're exciting. Um, I get to add more books to my shelf, which, you know, they probably don't, can't quite fit, but we'll find a place. Um, but until then, happy reading and I'll see you next time.